Hi everyone. The title of this video is called, This is Why You Need Jesus. I wanted to put this video forward for anybody that just may be passing by, happened to see my videos out of curiosity, maybe you've seen them on my pages, and you were like, hmm, I wonder if this is something I need to hear. So I'm praying that this video really puts things into perspective about where you personally stand if you don't know Jesus and why you need Jesus. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get all this video done in this one sitting. If not, I'll have to do it in two parts, which you won't know. You'll just see a skip like you do any other time. But right now my, my phone's at 79% memory. So I'm praying that I'll be able to get this video completed in the time I need to. So if you are watching and you don't know Jesus, or you did hear about Jesus by name, maybe you heard about what he's done, but you don't think it applies to you, I'm going to state that you are in bondage and imprisoned. And you may be thinking, by what? Your sin. And then so you may be thinking, well, I don't sin. You know, maybe you're thinking that you're not as bad as a murderer or a rapist. Whatever horrible crime that you can think of, you maybe you think, I'm not as bad as them. Now, that is basically how the world judges themselves. They look at the good they do, and they think that they're not as bad as other people. Now, you are not capable, as a man, to judge what is right and good. Well, you, you may be thinking, well, what about judges? I mean, they're judging according to the laws of this world. But I'm speaking about God as the holy and righteous judge. You hear many judges possibly in this world that, you know, maybe they take bribes. So they are not a good judge. But even if they are a good judge and they don't take bribes and such like that, they will judge according to the law. And according to any judge, they're going to make sure that you pay for your crime, whether it's a, you know, driving with, you know, DUI, you're, you're intoxicated or stealing, or whatever. You're going to be judged by the laws of this world. And so you will have to pay for that crime. And God is that same judge. Maybe I'll get to that later on. Now, according to man and God, God's standard of judging is different than man. Now, like I said, you think of the most horrible crime and console yourselves and think you're not that bad? What you deem right and good is different than someone else. Somebody may think or have an idea of what they think is right and wrong. And the way they think is different than yours. I mean, you could think of somebody that may be crazy and their idea of right and wrong is different than yours. Or somebody that's a murderer, their idea of right and wrong is different. So this world will live by moral relativism where they choose their own morality. They do what they think is right. So we need a judge that's taken an objective view and judges us by a standard that is right. We need a judge that doesn't take bribes, somebody that we can trust, and God is that judge. Now, morality is changing, but God doesn't change. And it says in Scripture, I am the Lord, I change not. Now, God has a st standard for all men, so that they know what is good. And that standard is the Ten Commandments. And whether people realize it or not is that God has given them a, can, a conscience. So God has put that law in their conscience. So when they break it, 
they maybe at first feel bad, but then their their conscious conscience can start becoming dull. The the you know whenever we we sin and we do what is against our conscience, we feel bad. Well, people can get used to that and keep doing a sin until they don't feel bad anymore. So. One second. So like I said, God has a standard for all men to follow, and God is the only judge. There are no other judges that are holy and who are right other than God. So we can trust God because God works through love. But like I said, he also has a standard. Now, you may be adamant about the whole sin issue and think that you don't sin. But... Like I said, God has a standard. He judges us different than we, the way we would judge ourselves. Like I said, we judge ourselves by thinking, well, I'm not as bad as this person, or I'm not as bad as a murderer, or whatever it is. But God's is different. God's standard is this, according to the Ten Commandments. Have you ever lied? If you have lied, then you've broken a commandment. Have you hated? Jesus said that if you hate somebody, it's the same as murdering them. Have you lusted after a woman or a man? Have you thought about having sex with him? Maybe you committed fornication, which is adultery. So then you have sinned on each of them. Did you want what somebody had, like a new car or whatever it was, then you have coveted. Did you place your wealth ahead of God? Do you give your wealth more thought than anything? How about making money? Well, God said, you shall have no other gods before me. Well, you're setting money as an idol or mammon. And so therefore you've broken the, the first commandment. Now, these are the laws God has set for all men. And if you've broken one law, you've broken them all, according to the book of James. Now, it says in Romans chapter 2 that there is no one who does good, no one who seeks God. All men have together become corrupt, and each has gone by their own way. So that basically states what humanity is. There is no one good that isn't humanity. Not one person. Now, your sin is killing you. And it says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages have, of sin is death. Now, there is no one doing good so that it outweighs the bad. And that's the thinking that many of people of the world have, is that, well, you know, I, I did sleep around and commit fornication, but maybe if I go help at a homeless shelter... It'll outweigh the bad. Or maybe if I give money to such and such person, it'll outweigh all the bad I've done. But that's not how God works. Because you still are operating in sin. You're still operating in defiance. And you got to realize, according to the book of John, that God's wrath is on the whole of humanity who doesn't have the shelter from that wrath. Now I'll get to the shelter eventually. But all of humanity has the wrath of God on them because they are not getting into that place of shelter. Now, sin according to God is what the problem is. You choose your way and not God's. And maybe you've walked in defiance. You know, you, you went against your conscience about something. Maybe you have taken another man's wife or husband and you knew it was wrong but you did it anyways or you did a, a specific sin that was wrong which went against your conscience but you because of your persistence and wanting to do that sin then you've broken God's law now this whole world works under I want my cake and eat it too so they say well I'm just going to possibly find any other religion or belief so that I can continue on 
in my pursuit of this sin. And according, you know, you may choose, like, a, like I said, another religion or whatever, and claim that as your God. But God is the only God that's out there, according to Isaiah 45, 22. I am, the, I am God. There is no one other than me. And then in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. So, God is the only judge. And it's said in the book of Acts that man, God has allowed men to go their own way. But in these last days, he's calling them to come to himself. So, you can't choose another religion because there is only one God. And it's the God that is stated in the Bible. He's the God that has created all of us. So, you can't get past that gnawing in your mind that you know what you're doing is wrong because you're hearing this truth that God is the only God and the only judge. Now, when you die, you will face God without protection if you continue on in the path that you're walking now. You will be naked before God and your sin will be exposed. God has it all written down in a book of all your sin. Your sin is what will be judging you. Your defiance to God's law and your conscience. All that's going to be weighed out before you. So, I hope you're getting the idea that you need to be protected. And so you may be thinking, how am I going to get protected? By whom? There is only one way to be protected from God's wrath against, you know, your defiance of sin. And that is Jesus. It says in 1 John 4.10, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us because he gave his life as a atoning sacrifice for our sin. And then we have John 3.16 that said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And then John 3.17, it says, For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And we're saved through Jesus' blood. Now, in the time of Moses, God gave Moses the instructions to the Israelites to put the blood of, I believe it was sheep, on their doorpost or a lamb. And the, the I guess the killing angel went through and killed the, un, the firstborn in Egypt. So all of the Israelites were protected, but Pharaoh's child wasn't protected. The people didn't have God's protection of them over them and it was that blood similarly Jesus's blood is what takes care of our sin it doesn't cover it it removes it and so Jesus clears out our consciences so that we're free from any kind of sin and guilt of sin and you can read that in Hebrews and in Romans so your sin is what Jesus had dealt with on the cross whatever you did all you have to do is confess your sins to Jesus. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for these sins that I've committed. Lord, I ask that you would take my sin away. And Lord Jesus, I ask that you would save me from the Father's wrath of the, the sin that I have been walking in. And God will save you. So you don't have to pray it in that way. Just ask Jesus in. And to ask him in you know, means that you're going to be walking in a different way. You're going to give your life to him, realizing that he has taken care of your sin. So you have to start your life, which is, there's only life through Jesus. And the only way to live this new life is to walk close with God, hearing his voice, being guided by him, Getting a Bible, reading that, because just as 
we need food to survive. You need the spiritual food of what's in the Bible. You need to read it. So I would suggest start reading in Matthew, read to Revelation, then go back to Genesis and read to Malachi and just keep reading so that you can get everything that God has taught in Scripture so that you can learn, so God can help you to make the right decisions. Read the Bible, then find a church that you can you can worship in that teaches the Bible and teaches integrity and learning to love God, and then learn to worship God, because God is no, he's closer. Once you ask Jesus in, God resides in you. So you learn to hear his voice, and he will guide you. So thank you for taking the time to watch, and God bless you.